does not seem to be written. Um, There we go. All right. Does this work?
Welcome to uh, covering the cost accounting fall 2016 budget project. I'm going to run through some various components of it to help you uh, understand what you're doing. And uh, hopefully this will also be available later so others can watch this as well. Uh, so hopefully you had a chance to look at the budget project. You have, at least maybe have it in front of you. Uh, you kind of see what's going on. Some background here. Uh, this is going to be a operating budget uh, or the whole entire budget package for a retail company. You are helping Jack's Doggy Palace with their annual budgeting process. You need to create a master budget for the company's 2017 first quarter's operations, January, February, March. This budget is for potential investors, friends of Jack's, whom he hopes will contribute capital to his business. Jack sells designer dog collars. So a simple, basic little retail company. So all the information that is given into the assignment, I've actually put into, you download the template, uh, the correct one for your class. Uh, this is originally for the online uh, version of cost accounting. So uh, this template is related to that project. Uh, some of the numbers are different for uh, the two different classes. So make sure you are looking at the correct one for your class. But this uh, template that you downloaded from Blackboard uh, basically has all this information that is given to you. And uh, what we have here is uh, some information about November and December, and then just various pieces that you'll see uh, throughout the, the, that we'll be working with. Well, the first thing is any budget starts with a sales forecast. Well, in our case, we actually have three different sales forecasts. Uh, they're from three different people. So what we could do is build a budget, the whole package for each one of these forecasts, but that would take a lot of time and effort. And Excel has this nice tool called VLOOKUP so that we can build all our budgets off of one cell and so that we can actually uh, toggle between any number we want. Right? So this is, we're going to start with our sales forecast, looking at the head sales clerk. Here is 12,000. Jack says, thinks the sales for January are going to be 13.5. And the store manager says 14.5. Okay? So if you go to the tab on sales budget, let's zoom in a little here so... It looks a little better. And you see this. Uh, what you also know in the template, you can only key in to uh, the grayed out areas. Uh, I've got checks in place in here, so there's a bunch of background stuff going on so that you don't uh, mess anything up. Uh, it's all protected except for the grayed areas. Okay. Well, we're going to start here, and I also have comments uh, to help 
as you go along. Uh, we're going to start here with forecast one. Start building all of the same forecast so that we can go through uh, and see how it's done. Okay. All right, so a sales budget is simply unit sales times the price per unit to get you total sales. So uh, what we want to do is start off with one of the three forecasts. And since we're going to start with forecast one, we're going to build a V lookup. So V lookup. And you see a cell starts to kind of fill it in for you. And it tells you exactly what it wants. What's a lookup value, table, and then what column do you want it to return? So you want Excel to look up here to where you're typing one, two, or three. So we select that, B1. And then we want it to go back and look at the table that we have the three forecast in, which is on the assumptions tab. So A3 through C5. That's our table. From I can't there, answer that. From there, uh, we are going to then say, what do we want Excel to return to us? We want it to return the forecast that matches the number we put. So we want it to return from column three. One, two, three. So we put a three. Close the parentheses, hit enter. And there you have your sales forecast. You can check to see if the fee lookup works. If you hit two up here, changes to the Jack's forecast. Three, changes the store manager. Let's go back to one. All right, so now we have our unit sales for January, and we can build the rest of the, the budget. Our price per unit, we're told, is they sell the dog collars for $15 each. So we have that on the assumptions page. We go over here under sales information, find the 15, and we just link to it. Total sales, then, is your unit sales. Has your price per unit. get 180,000. That's January. So from here we need to build February. February is simply tells us increase 5% over January sales. So we're going to have to have a 5% increase. Okay. Well how do we do that? Well we'll start with equals. We know that means we're going to have the January sales plus an increase Five percent. So January sales times the five percent sales growth that we have on the assumptions page. It's simply January sales plus five percent of January sales and gets us the five percent increase. Okay? Well that's all good. It comes out to a nice number, twelve thousand six hundred. But our little instructions tell us we need to round to the nearest ten units. It doesn't necessarily matter right here, but when we get into some of the other forecasts, we see that that's not to the 10 units. units. So we need to add a round function. How do we add round? Well, we simply go in and start typing equals round. And you see, when we do that, Excel says you want a number and then the number of digits you want to round to. Well, in our case, our number is our little formula right here. That is our number. So all we need to do is make sure we have parentheses around it. And Excel says, okay, that's our number that we want to round. The next thing is how do we know, how do we tell Excel to round to the tens place? We don't just say 10. Uh, Excel doesn't uh, work that way. It looks at where the decimal place is and says, how many places either right or left of that do you want me to go? And in this case, we want to go to um, one place left of the decimal place. So we want to say negative one. That rounds to the tenth place. And again, we can't really tell if it does anything there, but if you change this to forecast three, you can see now that that's being rounded. Well, it's the same $15 as the price per unit, so what you can do is go and just link back to it, or if you understand that the fact when you carry across the formula, when you carry it across, Excel says, hey, since I moved over a column, you must have meant for me to move uh, the original amount over a column. 
Well, we don't want that. We want it to stay at D20. So if you put the little dollar sign in front of the D, it holds that place. So when you carry it across, it will keep the 15 in each box. Whereas for total sales, we want to then, we do want it to update in each column. So we're not going to put any uh, dollar signs in anything. And then we just carry that across and it will automatically fill in for us. As long as we don't go too far. As you see, though, there's some error little messages here that will pop up. Right now, this is telling you that March is incorrect, or the whole thing is incorrect, because March is not complete. Okay. For March, you'd simply then, it's a 2% decrease from um, February sales. So we would need to set up a similar formula here, but using the, the negative 2% decrease. So it's going to be February sales plus a 2% decrease in February sales. And here we can see that we need this rounded. So we do the round function again. Voila, we have correct listed. All right, so that gives us the sales budget, which is accrual accounting. So uh, we also need to figure out then the cash portion related to this. We're eventually going to build a cash budget. All right, so we read on, and number three in our little uh, sheet tells us typically 40% of sales are made in cash and 60% are paid in credit. Jax expects to collect credit sales as follows 10% in the month of sale, 60% in the month following the sale and 30% two months following the sale. Assume there will not be any bad debt. So this is kind of just how um, the, the cash is going to be collected uh, related to the sales that we make. So 10% or 40% of the sales are made in cash. So cash sales, in January, we're going to get immediately 40% of this 180,000 in cash up front. So we need a formula for that. Uh, we take the total sales times the portion that is cash. Simply find out in the assumptions and we hit enter. Okay. And since we want that to be the same for February and March, we can actually just put the dollar sign in front of that D and carry it across. What else we have happening is that 10% of those credit sales are going to be collected before the month ends. So while 60% of this is made in cre credit, there's still going to be some of our customers that will pay that off before January ends. Okay? So to figure that out, we take our sales amount and figure out the credit portion, which is 60%. Of that then, 10% will be collected before January is done. Now, what typically happens is most of our credit sales are from customers uh, who are going to pay the next month, which is, you know, very reasonable. Um, <coughs> so how we represent that, in this case, January. One month previous would be December. December is not on this page, so we want to put our equal sign, and go to the assumptions page, and find December's information. And we see that we have credit sales for December, 38,100. All we need is the credit sales. We don't care about the cash portion that was made in December that's already taken care of in December. So in this case, we're just going to take the credit sales and find the fact that one month following the sale, we'll get 60% of that. Two months back was November. So again, we put the equal sign. We find November's information. And we find out two months following the sale, we get 30% of the credit sales. So total cash receipts for January is going to be the sum of the cash sales and the credit collections. Any 
and you see it says correct answer. Okay. See, since we don't have everything, it'll say check formulas when it's not completely uh, correct. Okay. All right, so then um, from here, I'm going to quickly go through uh, the rest of this, just to have it built, but uh, so you can either slow down some video, stop or check your own ideas kind of that you're kind of figure, starting to figure it out by yourself. Uh, one thing I will say here, February, one month back is January. So what we'd want to do is go uh, equals, that's the total sales for January. We go and find the credit portion of that and the fact that this is one month following the sale, the portion that is going to be collected in February related to January's credit sales. And then we have that. So take this opportunity to finish up your sales budget. Once you have that, you should hit all correct answers. A little note here, uh, so this is the cash portion and you see that it is different from then the actual sales portion. This will put on our uh, pro forma income statement here in a little bit. Uh, the difference then of what's not collected from February, March, is going on our balance sheet here. You go to the very end, you'll see the tabs of balance sheet. This spreadsheet is being built as we go along. Uh, so right now, of course, it's not in balance. We don't have all the pieces. But once you get completely done, it should say balance sheet in balance where your total assets equal your total liabilities and equity. Uh, once you have that in balance, you can be pretty confident that you did the budget correctly. Okay. You can also go here if you want to check real quick to see one of the others forecasts and you see all the answers are still correct. Let's, next, let's merge, yeah, move on to the purchase budget. So if we're going to sell something, we've got to have those items in stock in order to sell them. So at the minimum, you know, we need to have enough dog collars in stock to make our sales needs. Well, in this case, we can start off with our sales units. We simply already have those in the sales budget. We just have to link to them. In fact, we can just carry that formula all the way across. So not only though do we need to have our meet our needs of 12,000 dog collars on hand if we expect to sell them, there's going to be times that maybe we're a little off. Maybe we end up going to sell more. Are the fact that we end January 31st and we open our door on February 2nd, we need to have some items in stock. So companies maintain a desired ending inventory. So a desired ending inventory for Jacks. Uh, number four tells us they like to maintain an ending inventory balance of 10% of next month's sales. So they want to end January 10% of next month's sales on hand. So that's simply going to take our desire, our February sales and multiply it by our 10% rule. Go to assumptions, go down to the cost of goods sold information section. And we see desired ending inventory 10% of next month's sales and we select that, and we get our desired ending inventory. Inventory needs then is simply sales plus desired ending inventory. So we would want to have on hand 13,260 if we're going with uh, the head sales clerk's forecast. Well, since this is not our first uh, month of production or month operation, we actually are going to have beginning inventory. So we're not going to need to purchase all 13,000 uh, dog collars. We're actually going to only have to purchase what we don't already have on hand on January 1st. So beginning inventory for January is actually going to be the ending inventory for December. So we simply have to go and find December's 
ending inventory of 1400. So we'll already have 1400 on hand. And uh, you actually have the ability to kind of format these cells if they pop up uh, being something unusual, like if it shows up as a uh, percentage when it should be a dollar amount. Or in this case, it looks kind of funny that we have two decimal places here, but not up here. And simply select it and you can go ahead and format some of these cells. And I just removed the decimal places. So what is the inventory to purchase? Well, we have a need, uh, 13260 but we already have our beginning inventory. So we only need to purchase 11,860. So what is it gonna cost us to purchase? Well, our cost per unit is $8 per dog collar. So if we're going to purchase 11,860 at $8 each, our purchase amount is going to be 94880 So there's a few pieces that we can go ahead and, and fill across here. Uh, since this is just going to be adding two numbers, you can just carry that across. Same with inventory purchase. Our $8 is going to be, we need to put a little dollar sign in front of that D. We can carry that across. As well as our purchase amount. So we have a few blanks here, basically the inventory. So February, our beginning inventory is simply January's ending inventory. March will be February's ending inventory when we get that in there. So as March's desired ending inventory, well, it's going to be based on April sales. If we actually read through the rest of number four, let's see that April sales are budgeted to be 14000 So we're simply just going to have to go to the assumptions page and say, hey, 14000 is April sales and 10% of next month sales. And there we have it. All right. Well, that's how we're going to purchase, how we're going to make sure we have an inventory on hand. Well, how is the cash going to go out the door? Well, the cash is going to go out the door. Uh, if we read some more on number four, is that they purchase all inventory on account. They pay 70% of the purchases in the month of purchase and 30% the month after. So we need to just figure out how the cash goes out the door. For current month, 70% of that purchase is going to be paid before the month ends. So we go to assumptions, we have the AP payment section, we have 70%. And then we're also going to pay off the rest of last month's purchases. So last month was December. We see that we had purchases of 25,600. And we'll pay off the rest of that, which is 30%. We add those two up. And that will be the cash going out the door. Okay. All right, so pretty straightforward. You should be able to figure that out uh, fairly easy on your own. So I'm just going to quickly fill in the rest of this. you eventually should get correct. Okay. So that's the purchase budget. Right. So uh, next we have the SNA budget. Well, this is going to be our, um, well, basically all our other kind of expenses and uh, that sort of thing. So we read on. They will have the following expenses. Insurance, 200 a month. Licensing, 160 a month. Supplies are 2% of total monthly sales, advertising 250, payroll 4,500, and miscellaneous 4.5. So we have some fixed costs and we have some variable costs. The ones that are based on the sales amount are variable costs. So pretty basically straightforward, all we have to do is link to the, the expense. So for insurance, we come down and look, we have all our SNA stuff here ready to go. So we can just go ahead and select the $200 per month. 
licensing fees, 160. Supplies, 2% of sales. So we just got to take the 2%, go to our sales budget and find the sales dollars for January. Advertising is 250. Payroll is 4,500. And miscellaneous is 4.5% of the sales. And now you look, say, hey, wait, there's one more, it's depreciation. Well, if you read number six, it says Jack has decided that they need a new computer system and expects to buy it at the beginning of January. The equipment will cost $20,000. The computer system has a useful life of five years and a salvage value of two hundred. dollars They will begin depreciating the computer system in January using straight line depreciation. So we have a depreciation item we have to figure out. When we go to assumptions, you see there's this little gray box here figuring out the uh, depreciation. So simple, basic straight line depreciation. Uh, you know, going through, and if it's five years, that means 60 months. The salvage value is 200. So you should be able to quickly create your own uh, straight line depreciation formula. And then you get your depreciation expense. Go back here and link to that. We sum all those up. This is our total SNA cost for January. Go through, so you should be really easy to go through quickly and do February, March. To do all these to change correct. So, cash payments. Well, again, uh, this is a accrual accounting based expense, recognize expense when it's incurred, but then the cash goes out possibly differently. If we read on, number seven says they pay insurance, licensing, and advertising in the month incurred. They pay supplies, payroll, and miscellaneous expense in the month after incurred. Okay? So that means that some of these costs are paid when they happen, others are paid one month later. Something like a sales commissions, you wouldn't be able to calculate it until the end of the month, so you don't write the check until uh, the month following when you recognize the expense. So we have a few of those. So uh, insurance licensing and advertising are going to happen when they, the same month. So if it's insurance, it's gonna be January, it's gonna be paid in January. Licensing happens, it's going to be paid the same month. And so is advertising. Supplies, on the other hand, are paid the month following the expense, when the expense is recognized. So we go back, and we see that we had 4,100 in supplies for December. That will be paid in January. Payroll, we find December's payroll, and that's what will be paid in January. And the same with miscellaneous. What you should notice here is that depreciation is not on the sale, the cash payment side. It was on the expense side, but it is not a cash item. We'll have that $20,000 for the equipment going out the door when we do the cash budget, but the depreciation is only recognized as an expense. It is not a cash item. We can simply sum these up. And we're ready to go. We have correct listed for us. So you should be easy to sleep. I'll be able to finish up March, uh, February, March. Uh, some of these are going to be easy enough just to carry across. The ones that are paid in the same month. For the others, you go and just link back. For February, you're going to look link to January. Of course, from March, you'll look link February. And 
see we'll get all correct. So this is our um, SNA budget. Pop over to the balance sheet real quick. You see a few more items have gotten built for us. And we start to say we're still out of balance, we're still not done, but we're getting there. So those are all the, the basic operating budgets. Now let's talk about the cash budget. So one of the main things is, yes, you can be profitable, but if you don't have enough cash to cover your bills, you'll still go out of business. So having a cash budget is very important. So we're told a few things here. Uh, at the end of December, Jack expects to have debt of $50,000 outstanding. Currently, the payment schedule is $2,500 a month in principal and $100 a month in interest. So we have two cash items related to some debt that we have to take care of. And ending cash balance for December is budgeted to be $45,000. So the cash budget is going to be built from starting with beginning cash balance going all the way through January. Ending balance of January will be February's beginning balance. The beginning balance for March will be February's ending balance. So when we start here in January, we go back and we find December's ending cash balance of $45,000. That gets us started. So the first we can look at what cash is coming in. Well, we have our cash receipts. We go back to our cat our sales budget and where we calculated our cash receipts for January. We simply link to that and we have our cash receipts. So what cash is available? Well, it's our beginning cash balance plus our cash receipts. So that's how much cash will be available. So what cash is going out the door? Our cash payments. Well, we had some cash going out the door related to purchases. We calculated that on the purchase budget and a total cash payment of 74,096. We had cash going out the door related to SNA expenses. We linked to January's SNA cash payments of 97,10. We have that. Next, we have uh, interest. Interest, we're told, is $100 a month. So we go and we find down here under financing, we see monthly interest payment of $100. Link to that. And this is where that equipment cash comes in. While depreciation is recognized over the life of the piece of equipment, we're going to be paying the cash right up front. And there we have that. So total payments is the sum of those pieces. So we have total payments of 103,906. So we come down here. We need to find out if we have a surplus or a shortage. I'm simply going to look at how cash we have available compared to what is going out the door. We have available 161. We have cash going out of 103. So we have available 57,794. We're also told that we make a monthly debt payment of 2,500. You kind of scroll over here, you see I wrote interpayment amount as a positive number. This makes sure that the balance sheet that's being built for you is being done correctly. So we simply hit equals, find it here, the monthly payment, so that we have cash available, let the surplus, less the loan repayment, and that's our ending balance. So we can simply pretty quickly go through and um, do February, March. Most of these are just going to be dragged across formulas. Because we've already built everything. We just want to go ahead with the $100 interest is in one spot. And we don't have any information about any additional equipment being purchased. So this is the one time you can hard key a zero in here. Voila. We have everything listed as correct. So we can be fairly happy with the cash budget. Pop over to the balance sheet. Getting more stuff, getting closer. Uh, our big piece that we're missing right now is the retained earnings. We have everything else built up for us. 
but the retained earnings piece comes from the income statement. Currently, we're told that the retained earnings, Simmer's retained earnings was $34,750. So what's going to happen is the net income gets close to retained earnings, and that will increase this amount right here and hopefully get us into our balance sheet being in balance. So how do we do the income statement? The income statement is a pro forma income statement. So it's based on what we expect to happen. So again, an income statement is accumulation of the quarter, whereas the balance sheet is the snapshot of the end of the quarter. So what we have, sales revenue. Well, sales revenue is simply going to be the sum of, that, of those three months that we already put together. Put some in there if we're doing this. And sum those up. We get our sales revenue. Cost of goods sold. Now, be careful here. Don't uh, let what we've already done trick you up. What it is not. It is not the sum of the purchase costs. Those are what we purchased, not the goods we sold. It's not also not the sum of the total cash payments related to our inventory. What we have to do is figure out, based on how many units we're selling, those costs per unit. So we can start by multiple ways of doing it. One way, I will simply just sum up the sales and multiply them by the cost per unit. And we have our cost of goods sold. Gross margin is simply sales less cost of goods sold. Our selling and admin we go to our SNA budget, we sum up those three months. Operating income then is gross margin less SNA expenses. Interest expense then. We only have that listed on the cash budget, so we can find that there. Our net income then. So operating income less those interest expense and we have our net income should go to the balance sheet and now it says balance sheet and balance so one last quick check to see if you uh, got it all correct if you come in here enter two one two or three we did everything in one so go ahead and enter two you see your budgets all updated everything says correct and the balance sheet is still in balance Go back and say, hey, what if we're going to follow uh, the store manager's projection, which is three? Again, everything updates real quick. Our balance sheet is still in balance. So all the budgets quickly update simply because we linked everything to this one cell. In some format, everything links back to right here. Uh, and so simply by changing one, two, or three, we can have that updated. Now, in the, you know, building your own budget like this instead of using my template where you could go in and actually change these numbers if need be. Um, you could go in and say, hey, what if it comes back and you had a different forecast, you could quickly change any of these numbers and since you've linked everything, that any place that, that shows up would automatically update for you. You wouldn't have to go and worry about, hey, did I update every page correctly? But since everything is linked, it would automatically do that for you. Uh, so that's the beauty of using uh, linked uh, formulas and spreadsheets uh, and getting it all done. And you only have to you know, update once and everything else updates for you. So hopefully this uh, kind of helped you out uh, so you can see uh, how to do this project. And um, if you have questions, you can email me and I will check on those regularly. Don't wait until the very last minute to uh, Try to do this project. Um, do give yourself time. It will take you a little bit longer than this 37 minutes that I spent going through this very quickly. Uh, hopefully, you can pause the video if you need it and, and go back. Thank you, and I uh, hope you have a good day.